Greetings, Mother Factors! My name is Sam, and I'm here to talk to you all about the beautiful, exciting, hobbit-filled land of New Zealand. Located in the Middle Earth of nowhere, New Zealand is here for all your dramatic scenery and amusing accent needs. The Big NZ is practically overflowing with wildlife too, as well as burly rugby players and giant inflatable orbs. All hail the orb. But why is the sex life of the New Zealand longfin eel so tragic? Why are New Zealand's beaches lying to you? And how many New Zealanders have already clicked off this video because I made fun of their silly, silly accents? <laughs> Actually, I probably shouldn't make fun of this video's principal target demographic. This is my job. Ugh, me and my hubris. Two out of three of these questions are going to be answered, so grab a nearby sheep, make a comfy chair out of some number eight fencing wire, and prepare yourself for 101 facts about New Zealand. Number one. New Zealand is a sovereign island nation in the southwestern Pacific Ocean. That's it, video over. Good night, everybody. Good night. Number two. Geographically, the country is comprised of two main land masses, the more densely populated North Island and the mountainous South Island. There are also roughly about, mm, I don't know, 600 smaller islands that are also part of New Zealand. Number three. New Zealand is part of the Zealandia continent, of which 93% is submerged beneath ocean water. Zealandia was only recognised as a bona fide continent in 2017. That's really recent. I mean, finally, God. Number four. New Zealand is situated roughly 900 miles east of Australia, across the Tasman Sea. As such, they are often lumped together, especially given their fairly similar accents, which Australians and New Zealanders will tell you sound completely different, even though they don't. Number five. Because of its remoteness, preferring to hang out on its own in the middle of nowhere like a right little emo, the islands of New Zealand constitute the last major landmass outside of Antarctica to be settled by humans. During this long period of isolation, a distinct ecology emerged, teeming with a wide variety of animal, plant and fungal species, all enjoying life without humans obliterating them. Number six. So when did we turn up in New Zealand? Archaeologists believe that the Maori people, the Polynesians who settled in the islands, arrived sometime between 1250 and 1300 AD. Yes, that's right, I said AD, mother effer. That means that New Zealand has been inhabited by humans for less than 800 years. Number seven. <laughs> According to Maori tradition, the native people of New Zealand came from an island called Hawaii, the original home of the Polynesian peoples. As such, Hawaii is viewed as the source of life, and legend dictates that the soul of Polynesian people returned to Hawaii when they die. Number eight. According to Maori legend, the dead travel to Cape Reinga, the northwesternmost point of the North Island. Here, they leap off an 800-year-old Pahutukawa tree and into the ocean, beginning their trip back to the ancestral homeland of Hawaii. Number nine. But the Maori weren't alone on the island for long. In 1642, the Dutch explorer Abel Tasman became the first European to sight New Zealand, only about 400 years after the Polynesian people had already arrived there. Numerous geographical features, such as the Tasman Sea and the Australian island of Tasmania, are named after him. Number 10. When Tasman arrived at the islands, he initially thought it was part of South America and named it Statenland, meaning state's land. When they realised that the land mass was very much not attached to the South American continent, they changed the name to Nova Zealandia, the exact Dutch translation for New Zealand. It was named this after the Dutch province of Zeeland. Number 11. However, it wasn't actually the Dutch who first colonised the island now known as New Zealand, as it was the British. Sorry, in the form of Captain James Cook. He first began making regular contact with the Maori people in 1769, roughly 127 years after Tasman did. The British began trading with the Maori, exchanging metal tools, weapons, and food for timber, Maori artifacts, and food. People love food, apparently. <laughs> Yay, food. Number 12. Roughly 70 years later, the British decided to make an honest woman out of New Zealand and declared British sovereignty over the islands in 1840 with the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi. The accord was signed by William Hobson, New Zealand's first governor, and about 540 Maori chiefs. Number 13. Europeans continue to arrive in New Zealand, including Christian missionaries who ultimately converted most of the Maori population. Unfortunately, however, with European people came European diseases, including such smash hits as influenza and measles, to which the native Maori people had no natural immunity. As such, the 19th century saw the Maori population fall dramatically, while the number of Europeans continued to surge. Number 14. Not only that, the Europeans brought with them fancy new technology in the form of guns, which soon ended up in the hands of the Maori. Though different Maori groups had always fought amongst themselves, because that's just how humans be, yo, the introduction of the muskets made these conflicts significantly more deadly. 
It's thought that approximately 20,000 Maori died as a result of the so-called musket wars, though some estimates put the figure as high as 40,000. Number 15. The intertribal musket wars decimated various Maori groups, which forced many of them to flee their traditional lands and shifted territorial boundaries for others. This opened up large areas to European settlement. Inflaming tensions between Maoris and the New Zealand government, they quickly escalated into a series of armed wars, now known as the New Zealand Wars. Between 1845 and 1872, roughly 3,000 were killed, the vast majority of which were Maori. Number 16. In 1841, New Zealand officially became a colony of the British Empire, before being upgraded to a dominion in 1907. This was a change in name only, meant to elevate the region's position above the less than complimentary status of colony. New Zealanders used to celebrate their nation's promotion on Dominion Day on the 26th of September, but the tradition died out only a few decades later. Number 17. New Zealand eventually gained full independence in 1947, and with the passage of the Constitution Act in 1986, unilaterally eliminated all residual British legislative power. All such residual... <laughs> Lunilat unilaterally, unilaterally eliminated all residual British legislative power. Well done, you guys. However, the British monarch remained the nation's head of state, meaning that Queen Liz is very much the Queen of New Zealand, represented in the country by Governor General. Love you, Queen Liz. Number 18. As such, New Zealand is today a constitutional monarchy, organised into 11 regional councils and 67 territorial authorities for local government purposes. Sexy. Number 19. But that's not all. The realm of New Zealand, which sounds like Middle Earth itself, but we'll get to that in a bit, also includes Tokelau, Niue, the Cook Islands and the Ross Dependency, which is a slice of Antarctica claimed by New Zealand, as well as the name of a horrible disease that Rachel from Friends seemingly suffered from. Number 20. In the Australian Constitution, which is a great read by the way, I suggest you pick it up sometime, New Zealand is listed as a state of Australia, which means they can join the Australian Confederation if they so choose, and they chose not to in 1901. Number 21. New Zealand's population is 4.7 million, which is pretty much half the population of New York and over 35,000 times the size of Norwich. Most of them are now of European descent. The indigenous Maori are the largest minority at slightly under 15%, followed by Asians and Pacific Islanders. Number 22, oh, oh, more delicate. In case you're wondering how big the combined land area of New Zealand is, I can help you out there. It totals roughly 103,480 square miles. You're welcome, Bish. Number 23. The official languages of New Zealand are English, which, I mean, thank goodness, as otherwise how the heck could they understand what I'm on about, and Maori, which I've been practicing my small talk in. <clears throat> Awina mai ahau kai roto ahau i roto i te rohitaro, everybody. The other is New Zealand Sign Language. Interestingly, New Zealand was the first country on earth to make a signed language an official language, which they did in 1987. Number 24. In case you're wondering, by the way, the Maori name for New Zealand is Aotearoa, which I almost definitely butchered then, but it means land of the long white cloud, which is coincidentally what Snoop Dogg calls his house. Well, <laughs> I assume. Number 25. The North Island is known in the native Maori as Te Ika a Maori. The South Island BT dubs is known as Te Waiponamu. Number 26. New Zealand's capital city is Wellington, which for some reason I find hilarious. It's the most southern capital city in the world too, in fact, if you want yet another fact to impress your friends with. Also use that on dates too. They're gonna, they'll really love it. Number 27. Wellington isn't the most trocker block place in the big NZ though. Oh no, that honour goes to Auckland. I have a feeling it's about to do what we're about to cover in the next fact, I reckon, so stay tuned. Number 28. I reckon it's because of this big bad boy, the Auckland City Sky Tower. It's 1,076 feet high, making it the tallest freestanding structure in the Southern Hemisphere. I mean, that's why people move to places, right? Big tall mothers like this absolute unit. Number 29. Wake up, sheeple. Auckland, New Zealand is also known as the City of Sales, because it loves that song by AWOL Nation so damn much. Sail! <laughs> Just kidding, it's actually because it has the highest boat ownership per capita in the world. In fact, one in every three people own a boaty boy. Number 30. To give you an idea of how unevenly New Zealand is populated, it should be noted that more people live in Auckland than the entirety of South Island. Number 30. Oh, actually, stop there. On the last Monday of January, the Auckland anniversary regatta takes place. A regatta being a boating race and not an Italian dessert like I assumed. It's the world's biggest single-day yachting event, with more than 1,000 boaty boys taking part. Number 32. 
The New Zealand city of Gisborne is the first city in the world to see the sunrise. It's also just a mere 308.4 miles off the international date line, which meant on December 31st, 1999, they got major TV coverage as the first to welcome in the new millennium. Number 33. Oh, look at this. This is New Zealand's 90 mile beach. Looks nice, doesn't it? Guess how long it is. Go on, guess how long it is. Wrong! It's actually 56 miles long. Everything is a lie. Number 34. If you live in New Zealand, you should probably strap in for the long haul in terms of life itself. New Zealandish females have an average life expectancy of 82.3 years, and men have 78.3, both of which are one of the highest in the world. Number 35. New Zealand is a good country for the ladies too, and not just because of the lack of snakes. And no, I'm not quite sure what I meant by that either. NZ allowed women the vote in 1893, the first country in the whole of planet Earth to allow suffrage. Number 36. New Zealanders seem to bloody love wires, more specifically, number 8 fencing wire. It seems they use it so often it's become slang for New Zealanders' ability to fix everything, and using ingenuity and innovation to do so. Number 37. New Zealanders refer to themselves as Kiwis, which probably dates back to World War I when New Zealand soldiers acquired the nickname. This is because of the flightless Kiwi bird, which is native to New Zealand itself. Number 38. Here's a fact about kiwis for you. In relation to their size, their eggs are the largest in the world. They tend to weigh a whole third of the bird's weight. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, when I said kiwis just now, I meant the birds, not humans. I should have specified. Number 39. Kiwis also have a sense of smell, incredibly. Again, the birds do, not that great if it was a human. They're actually the only birds in the world that do. Number 40. The New Zealandish dollar coin features a kiwi bird on one side. It could also be called the Kiwi in international money circles too, which no doubt must be confusing for any Kiwis in the room, or any other Kiwis in the room for that matter. Number 41. The Kiwi is so beloved in New Zealand that numerous organisations use it in their logos and signage. One such group is the Royal New Zealand Air Force, which features the bird as part of their emblem. This is nothing short of a cruel joke made at the expense of the flightless Kiwi, and I for one am shook and demand an apology. The meaning of life. New Zealand only has two land mammals that are native to the dang place, specifically two species of bat, meaning Bruce Wayne would have absolutely chuffing loved it. <laughs> Just kidding, he's afraid of bats, that's kind of the whole point of Batman. Everything else was introduced by Maoris and Europeans. Number 43. New Zealand is also home to the Weta Bug, a wingless insect endemic to New Zealand that has changed little in the last 190 million years. The harmless giant Weta can weigh in excess of 70 grams, making it the world's heaviest insect. Number 44. Indiana Jones should live in New Zealand. You know why? No, not because the Sioux are particularly cheap. It's because there are apparently absolutely no snakes in New Zealand. Number 45. New Zealand is also home to Hector's dolphin, which is a species of dolphin. Not just one dolphin in particular belonging to a guy called Hector, as some people very reasonably assume until they're corrected. One subspecies of Hector's dolphin, known as Maui's dolphin, is the rarest and smallest dolphin in the world, and is nowhere else on Earth but in New Zealand's waters. Number 46. New Zealand is also home to more species of penguin than any other country. What you do with that information is between you and your chosen deity. Number 47. New Zealand is also home to the world's only flightless parrot, the Kakapo. Also known as the Owl Parrot, the Kakapo was almost wiped out in the 1990s before conservation efforts began to increase their numbers. The Kakapo are known for their friendly nature and their extended lifespans, with some individuals living to over 90 years of age, making the Kakapo possibly the longest living bird species in the world. Number 48. The closest living relative to the Kakapo is the Kia, which is the world's only alpine parrot, living in the mountainous regions of New Zealand's South Island. Unlike its exclusively terrestrial cousin, the Kia can fly, which it probably uses as a party trick at family reunions. Number 49. New Zealand has 44 native reptile species, of which the largest is the Tuatara, which can grow up to two feet long. Despite the fact that it looks very much like a lizard, it's actually the only surviving species of a distinct family of reptiles that became extinct outside of New Zealand 60 million years ago. Number 50. The long fin eel endemic to New Zealand is interesting for a number of reasons, one of which is that these slippy boys can live up to the ripe old age of 80 years old. That's pretty much the same lifespan as a New Zealand human. Number 51. Longfin eel also breed only once in their entire lives, which is a damn shame. Not only that, the point at which they do get to mate is at the end of their lives, meaning that the only action they get to experience is gross old people action almost immediately before death. Even more tragically, they have to swim all the way to Tonga to do it. I've never felt so sorry for an eel before. 
Number 52. As mentioned before, the population of New Zealand isn't that big. In fact, there are seven times as many sheep and three times as many cows as there are people. And, um, hello if you're watching, you guys. <laughs> Mooba. Number 53. In fact, of the total population of sentient organisms in New Zealand, only 5% is human, with the rest being made up of entirely non-human animals. This gives New Zealand the highest ratio of animals to humans on Earth. Number 54. New Zealand was once home to the truly enormous flightless birds known as moa, the largest species of which, the giant moa, reached around 12 feet in height. The moa was one of the largest birds to ever inhabit the Earth, and they were the dominant herbivores on the islands for thousands of years, before they were hunted to extinction by the Maori in the year 1500. Number 55. New Zealand is also home to cowrie trees, which take about 200 years to mature. The biggest tree boy in all the world is called the Lord of the Forest, and is over 169 feet tall. It's also over 2,100 years old too. Number 56. Does this tree scream Christmas, Christmas to you? Well, in New Zealand it does. Not literally though. This is the Pahutukawa tree, which is New Zealand's Christmas tree. It blooms crimson red flowers for several weeks each December, which is where it gets that snazzy look from. Number 57. New Zealand owes much of its natural beauty to the fact that roughly 30,000 square kilometres of the country falls within one of its 14 protected national parks. Number 58. The largest lake in New Zealand is Lake Taupo, which sits in the caldera of the Taupo Volcano, one of Earth's few known supervolcanoes. The Taupo Volcano's most recent eruption, known as the Iruani eruption, occurred roughly 26,000 years ago and constitutes the world's most recent super eruption. It's thought the volcano eruption violently ejected about 15,000 times the amount of volcanic material than the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. Number 59. Located in the northern reaches of New Zealand's southern Alps is Blue Lake, which has the distinction of holding the clearest natural fresh water in the world. The water in Blue Lake exhibits a visibility of up to 80 metres deep, a degree of clarity that reveals the water's beautiful natural blue colour. Number 60. Another interesting New Zealand lake is Frying Pan Lake, so named as it has the largest hot pool on Earth. Located near Rotorua, Frying Pan Lake has a surface area of almost 10 acres, and can reach temperatures of up to 200 degrees Celsius at its deepest point. The lake's hot waters give it a permanent covering of misty steam, perfect for background scenery in another Lord of the Rings film. Just saying. Number 61. For a short four-year period between 1900 and 1904, the northern New Zealand city of Rotorua was home to the largest geyser in the world, known as Waimangu, meaning black waters. The geyser was named after the dark colour of the mud and rock-filled water it would regularly blast an incredible 1,500 feet into the air. Number 62. The South Island's Kokoi Beach is home to the Moraki Builders, which are known worldwide for their unusually large and spherical shape. Interestingly, these boulders are not unique in New Zealand, as the North Island's Hokianga Harbour has its own set of spherical rocks known as the Kuroti Boulders, some of which measure at roughly 3 metres in diameter. These formations are known as concretions, and were formed in the earth when minerals built up around a nucleus like a rocky, huge snowball. Number 63. Ponamu, which forms part of the aforementioned Maori name for the South Island, Te Waipunamu, is a green-coloured stone revered by the Maoris. In English, the substance is simply known as greenstone and refers to several types of jade, bowenite, or serpentinite that the Maoris use to create ornate tools and jewellery. Nintendo 64. New Zealand is one liberal place. Same-sex marriage is legal, prostitution is legal, and the driving age is 15, which seems extremely dangerous. That last one, I mean, everything else probably fine. Number 65. Interestingly, New Zealand is one of the only two countries on Earth, the other being Denmark, to have two official national anthems. In 1940, God Defend New Zealand was adopted as the country's national song, and in 1977 was promoted to national anthem status on equal footing with God Save the Queen, which is normally played only when a member of the royal family is present. Number 66. New Zealand is actually the most peaceful place on Earth, or at least it was in 2009. That was the year that it topped the Global Peace Index. Number 67. New Zealand is apparently also one of the freest nations on Earth, scoring highly on various freedom scoring indices such as the Human Freedom Index, on which it most recently ranked third behind only Switzerland and Hong Kong. Number 68. According to the Corruptions Perception Index, New Zealand is the least corrupt nation on Earth, beating out other honourable and scrupulous nations like Denmark, Singapore and Canada. Number 69. Zealand. New Zealand is known for its staunch anti-nuclear stance, operating no nuclear power stations at all in the country, and maintaining a nuclear-free zone that blocks all nuclear-powered sea vessels 12 nautical miles out of the coast of New Zealand. 
In 1985, New Zealand refused to allow a nuclear-capable American warship to dock in any of its ports, as the US refused to confirm nor deny that the vessel was carrying nuclear weapons. The incident soured American-New Zealand relations dramatically, but earned the Kiwi nation the nickname of the Mouse That Roared. Number 70! Somewhat ironically, the so-called father of nuclear physics, Ernest Rutherford, was a New Zealander. In 1917, Rutherford became the first person to split the nucleus of an atom, and eventually went on to win a Nobel Prize for his work. Rutherford's face now appears on the New Zealand $100 note. Number 71. By far the most popular sport in New Zealand is rugby, which is the national sport of New Zealand, played by 250,000 people at club level. The national team is named the All Blacks due to their traditional black kit, and they are very, very good. Something about being extremely isolated and surrounded by sheep makes New Zealanders extremely talented at throwing balls backwards and smashing into each other. I don't know the science behind it either. Number 72. In fact, New Zealand won the first ever Rugby World Cup, held in both New Zealand and Australia in 1987. Number 73. New Zealand first competed as an independent nation at the 1920 Summer Olympics, and since then the country has won more Olympic gold medals per capita than any country in history. Nice one, Kiwis. Number 74. New Zealanders call walking and hiking tramping, apparently, which is weird because I swear that's a debauched activity that someone accused me of in high school. Odd. Number 75. It's also a very wet place too, or rather you have the capacity to get wet very often. <laughs> Let me explain. Every single place in New Zealand is never more than 87 miles away from the ocean, thus the wettage. Number 76. While mopping themselves dry, New Zealanders have given the world an awful lot. This is including, but not limited to, the disposable syringe, the non shortable electric fence, child-proof bottle tops, and zorbs. The big inflatable balls inside of which you strap yourself and roll down large hills, ostensibly for fun. Number 77. The first two people to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain, were New Zealander Edmund Hillary and Nepali Indian Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, who achieved their feat at 11.30am on the 29th of May 1953. For years after, the pair were frequently asked who was the first of them to actually step foot on the mountain's summit, to which they responded that the achievement was a joint effort. However, Tenzing later revealed that Hillary was in fact the first person atop the mountain. Very humble of him. Hashtag sit down. Hashtag be humble. Number 78. This right here is Georgina Bayer, who was both a mayor and then became a member of parliament in 1999. This was quite the milestone as she was the world's first transsexual member of parliament, and the world's first openly transsexual mayor. Number 79. A New Zealander by the name of Jim Burke holds the world record for opening the most oysters in an hour, with an incredible total of 1,719. That equates to prying open roughly 28 oysters a minute for a solid hour. Number 80. New Zealand also has some pretty popular films made there too. Popular movies made in New Zealand by New Zealand filmmakers include Once Were Warriors, Hunt for the Wilder People, The Whale Rider, and The Piano. Number 81. Of course I should also bloody mention that Lord of the Shuffing Rings too. All but one scene of the Lord of the Rings was shot in New Zealand, practically making the movies a 12 hour long infomercial for the country's landscapes. The tourism basically does itself. Number 82. The filming of the Lord of the Rings movies pumped some hot, hot money into the economy of New Zealand to the tune of around $200 million. The New Zealand government even created a minister for Lord of the Rings to ensure the most money could be made from the films. What an absolute nerd of a title that is, though. Number 83. The fruit known as the kiwi fruit earns New Zealand over a billion dollars a year, despite the fact it originated in China and as such was known as the Chinese gooseberry. It was later renamed the kiwi fruit after the New Zealand bird. Number 84. One of the most celebrated desserts in all of the world also originated in New Zealand, the pavlova. For the uninitiated, the mighty pavlova is a meringue cake topped with whipped cream and slices of fresh fruit. Ew. The popular dessert was named in honour of Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova, who visited New Zealand in the 1920s. Number 85. A farmer in New Zealand named John Lambert came up with the idea of using small airplanes to spray crops with fertilisers from the air. Yes, that's right, you can thank New Zealand for the miracle of crop dusting. And no, not that kind, you filthy swine. Number 86. New Zealand boasts over 400 golf courses, both public and private. That works out to roughly one golf course for every 9,000 New Zealanders, which is, you guessed it, the highest number of golf courses per capita on Earth. That may as well be my cat's phrase at this point. Number 87. New Zealand apparently has more helicopters in proportion to the population than anywhere on Earth. This is because they used them to cull deer in the 1960s, which is harsh, really. Soz Bambi. Number 88. 
From the people who love wires, they also love pipes too. Specifically, musical Scottish pipes. In fact, according to some sources like the BBC, for example, New Zealand has more Scottish pipe bands per person living there than Scotland itself does. <laughs> Suck on that, Scotland. Or rather, blow through it. <laughs> Number 89. The most famous pop song to come out of New Zealand is probably How Bizarre by OMC, which was a huge hit in Australia, Europe and the United States during the mid-90s. The band's name, OMC, stands for Otara Millionaires Club, a tongue-in-cheek reference to the band's poverty-stricken home of Otara. Number 90. The world's first commercial bungee jump operation was set up on the Kawawao Bridge in the Otago region in the South Island in 1988. This bungee site is still in operation today and gives thrill seekers the opportunity to leap into the 43 meter deep Kawarau River Gorge. Number 91. New Zealand is also home to something pretty spectacular, the longest place name in the world. Tell Matawakinetingen, oh, that, you know, that, that thing that's on screen now, is a hill in the North Island's Hawke's Bay region. I'm not even attempting to pronounce it properly, so don't expect me to try. Okay, I'll try. Tamata Wahaka Tan Gihinga Nakau Atamati Turi Puka Aka Piki Manga Haranuka Pokai Wen Ukitanata Hu. Yeah. Number 92. Other weird place names in New Zealand include an area in South Island's Mount Cook National Park called Hooker Valley, and a nature reserve on the South Island called Shag Point. Number 93. However, New Zealand's love of being a surly loner who hangs out alone at the bottom of the world has had an unintended consequence, as the country is left off maps with surprising frequency. This effect often turns up in popular culture, with images of Earth seen in TV and films, including The Simpsons and Star Trek First Contact, both of which miss New Zealand. Number 94. The strange trend is so prolific that Kiwi comedian Reese Darby and current New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern teamed up to create a comedy video alongside the hashtag GetNZOnTheMap hashtag to encourage people not to eliminate New Zealand from existence. There's even a Maps Without NZ subreddit featuring numerous examples of disrespectful New Zealandness maps and globes. <coughs> Deary me. Number 95. The somehow wildly popular live-action kids TV show Power Rangers has been filmed in New Zealand since 2003, the year in which the series was bought by Disney Studios. When the show was reacquired by Saban Entertainment in 2010, production remained in New Zealand. And that's where Power Rangers should have stayed, frankly. Number 96. In 2012, New Zealand broadcasted the first weather report delivered entirely in the Elvish Sindarin language from the Lord of the Rings universe. The forecast was delivered by New Zealand TV presenter Tamati Coffey, who is now a member of New Zealand Parliament, and good for him. Coffey even dressed up as an elf for the event, because why the elf not? <laughs> Number 97. In 1990, New Zealand became the first country in the modern world to appoint an official national wizard. The Wizard of New Zealand, whose real name is Ian Brackenbury Chanel, is an educator, comedian, magician and politician who was actually born right here in London, England. Snazzy. Number 98. Apparently, more people die in New Zealand each year playing lawn bowls and scuba diving. I don't know why I said it like that. Scuba diving. Scuba diving. That's still terrifying though. What are they bowling with? Cartoon bombs? Number 99. New Zealand is only one of two countries in the world where drug companies are permitted to advertise directly to the public. The only other country to do so is the good old US of A. It's number 100. New Zealand also has what is believed to be the steepest road in the world. Specifically, it's Baldwin Street in Dunedin. And with a 38 degree gradient, it's almost impossible to skip leg day there. Number 101! The Palmerston North Gisborne Railway Line, which runs up to the east coast of the North Island, passes straight through the middle of the Gisborne Airport runway. Like it literally goes right over it. <laughs> Rude. That was 101 facts about New Zealand. Which one was your favourite? Are we surprised by how little we mentioned Lord of the Rings? Are you also disgusted we didn't talk about Flight of the Concourse enough? Let us know in the comments down below. Also make sure to like this video and subscribe to us because it really helps us out if you actually watch our videos. Speaking of which, here are two of some of the finest videos you're likely to find on the internet. Don't believe me? Click on it and check. I've been Sam and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.